Today we're going to start chapter 7, which is about exponential and logarithmic functions. 7.1 uh, is about exponential growth and decay functions. So our learning targets today, we're going to write and evaluate exponential expressions to model growth and de decay situations. Alright, so growth that doubles every year can be modeled using a function that has the variable as the exponent. So we haven't seen these before. Usually our variable is our base and our a number is an exponent. But exponential functions have variables that are exponent. And that's what this says. A function with a variable as an exponent is called an exponential function. So the parent function, the parent exponential function is f of x is b to the x, where b is your base a constant, a number, and x is your exponent that changes. So it's kind of the opposite of having something like this where our base is actually our variable and our number is our exponent. It's now switched around for exponential functions. Alright, and here's what it looks like. Again, your base is this. It's a number. It's got to be greater than zero, not equal to one, because one to the thousandth to a thousandth power is still going to be one, so it never changes. So you want to, one to be either greater than one or less than one. All right. So the the graph of the parent function two to the x is shown. So two in this case, our base is two, and what this means is that whatever you're modeling is doubling. That, so the two tells you how things are, what, at what rate things are changing. This is what an exponential graph looks like. It's kind of a half parabola. And you can graph it by finding a table of values. So you probably want to have some negative values and positive values. If you have no other guesses, if you're going to graph using a table, you probably want to start with negative 2 to positive 3. Plug these into your, the value of x in for your exponent, calculate it, and plot your points. So the domain is all real numbers, and the range is y such that y is greater than 0 because you're not going to multiply something by a power and get a negative value. So it's going to be greater than zero. You can see this is going to get very, very close to zero, but it will never actually become, um, it will never become negative. And here it says, as the x values decrease, the graph of the function gets closer and closer to the x-axis. So that's what I was showing you. The function never reaches the x-axis because the value of 2x cannot be 0. In this case, the x-axis is an asymptote. And we'll learn, I, we may learn about these more when we get to rational functions. But an asymptote is, as it says, a line that a graphed function approaches but never crosses or never touches. So if you like to think of it like fences in a cow pasture, the cows can get closer and closer to the fence. In fact, they like to graze along that fence, but they can never actually, hopefully, ever get to the other side of that fence and probably don't want to touch it as well. All right, so the function of the form, let me put the revealer back up so it's not so overwhelming here. Function of the form f of x equals a to the bx where a is greater than 0 and b is greater than 1 is an exponential growth function. It increases as x increases. If b is between 0 and 1, so it's not 0 but it's less than 1, in other words it's going to be a fraction or a decimal, then the function is exponential decay. So if your base is greater than 1, it's going to be gro show growth. If your base is between 0 and 1, you're going to have a decay. And you're going to see a decreasing in value as x gets larger and larger. And if you think about it, if you multiply a fraction, if I have 1 half and I multiply 1 half by, times 1 half, I don't get a bigger number, I'm getting 
one fourth, which is smaller. And then if I multiply that by one half again, I get one eighth. So if you have a fraction, every time you multiply it by itself, it's going to get smaller and smaller. All right, remember in the function, y equals b to the x. y is a function of x still because the value of y depends on the value of x. And then negative exponents indicate a reciprocal. So x to the negative 2 is actually 1 over x squared, something that we, I think, learned at the beginning of the year we might have forgotten. All right, so tell whether the graph shows decay or growth and graph it. So you're going to look at the base. Remember our model is a, b to the x. Our base is here and that determines whether it's a growth or decay function. Here, so here's our base, 3 quarters, which is not greater than 0. So it's going to be a decay function. So we're going to graph using a table. They actually didn't choose any negative values. I, I would have chosen negative values. But what you see here is as you, it gets bigger, y gets smaller. So x to the 12th gives you a, a smaller number, and it's just going to continue to get smaller. So you're going to plot those points. And they actually stop here, which I would have continued, like I said, to get some of my negative values. Um, but you would be able to plot it so that you can see it's looking that direction. And again, you're not going to get negative numbers. OK. Next example. Tell whether the graph shows function or de decay, then graph. So here is my function. A to the BX is my model. If this is my base, my base this time is 1.05, which is greater than 1. So this is going to be a growth function. And if we find table values, this time I chose the table values starting from negative 10 going to positive 10. And you see it's, getting, it's going to continue to get smaller in this direction, continue to get larger in this direction. And if I graphed it, you would get something that looks like, and I'm going to show you because the graph they have is from the calculator, but I would want you to draw it. You're going to end up with something that looks more like this. And you can see that's what it looks like on the graphing calculator. All right, so one for you to try. Whoops, you saw the answer, but hopefully you know how to do this. 5 times 1.2 to the x. Tell me whether it's growth or decay, and then graph it using table values. All right, we can model growth or decay by a constant percent, increase or decrease with the following formula. So this is used a lot in the financial world. It's an important basic formula. It gets more complicated as you have more factors. So the final amount you have is a times a plus or minus r to the t. So the rate of increase, this is your rate of increase, percentage increase. t is your time periods. 1, well, a is your initial amount. So the reason that you have this one, if you're going, if it's increasing in value, for instance, like you deposit money in a bank and you get interest, the one plus, and let's say you get 5% interest, it's going to be 0 0.05. The one allows you to maintain the, the initial amount you have, and this is what your 5% interest in. So this one just allows you to keep what you have. This is where your growth is coming from each time period. And if it's something decreasing in value, then you would subtract. So like depreciation on a car, if it depreciates 10% a year, it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.10. OK, so in the formula, the base of the exponential expression 1 plus r is called the growth factor. So this is a growth factor because you're adding. And 1 plus r, 1 minus r is your decay factor. So as I said, 1 is going to decrease the value, 1 is going to increase the value. 
And x is used on the graphing calculator for t, so we're going to be doing using the graphing calculator to solve some of these problems. You don't have a t t for time, so you're just going to use the, the default variable on the calculator, which is going to be your x. And the look caret sign is the same as exponent. That's, this says 1.0625 to the x power. All right. Let's look at our problem. Clara invested 5000 in an account that pays 6.25% interest per year. After how many years will her investment be worth? So first we have to figure out the, the equation that models this. Remember our model is A at T equals A times 1. And this in this case she's earning interest so it's going to be 1 plus R times T or to the T power. So we need to fill in our A and our R. Our A is the initial amount. So our initial amount is going to be the $5,000. That's going to go in for our A. And then our interest is 6.25%. And remember, int when you're talking about percent, you divide by 100 before you put it in for R. So it's actually our R is going to be 0 0.0625. It's not going to be, don't make the mistake of having R be 6.25. So that's your equation. How are we going to find out what 10,000 is? So 10,000 is the final amount, and so that's going to be our f at t. The way to solve this mathematically would be using a log function. We haven't learned about those yet. We're going to learn about those soon. So for now, we're just going to plug this into our calculator as our equation, graph it. And yeah, as I said, you want to simplify this to be add the 1 and the 0, 0 0.0625 to, to become this. So put it into the y equals portion of your calculator. You might need to adjust the window a little bit. And then once you have that, you're going to trace until you get to a point where you have y is approximately 10,000 or as close as you can get to it. Here they have it as 12. And depending on your resolution, the book actually then says it's actually about 11.5 years, so it's a little less than 12. Um, see how close you can get to it. Um, if you said 12, that would probably be acceptable if that's as close as you could get. So again, you use the trace button to move your cursor around on your graph until y is equal to the desired amount. All right, a city population which was initially 15,500 has been dropping 3% a year. Write an exponential function and graph the function. Use the graph to predict when the population will drop below 8,000. So again, if our model looks like A at T equals A times 1, we're dropping. So it's going to be minus R to the T. So our initial value is 15,500. Our rate, 3%. Remember, 3% is 0 0.03, so don't forget to turn it into decimal form, the percent into decimal. And then combine these two terms, and that's going to give you this as your function that you're going to put into your graphing calculator. Graph it, and then do a trace to figure out when y is going to be 8,000 8, or less. And here they have their graph. They show it at 7930, which is 22 years. So it's about 22 years until the, the population drops below 8% if the rate stays 3% each year. All right, so last thing to do. This is one for you to try to make sure you understand. You should figure out whether it's um, which of the forms of the model equations you should use, and then figure out when the population will get to 2,000. That wraps up this lesson. The homework, this is the homework, and if you have any questions, bring them to class.